Shabbat shalom, everyone, and uh, a very warm welcome to everybody who's joined us on the first of the early Shabbatot, and especially some of our members who are not regulars and have joined us on this occasion, and hopefully throughout the winter as well. Uh, there are a number of our members that have your site this Shabbat, and I just want to um, mention them and offer them our best wishes, wish them long life. Uh, Frances Turner and her brother Robert Coe have your site for their father. Lionel de Jong and, his, uh, and Virginia de Jong have your site for their daughter. Uh, Richard Levy for his father, uh, Julia Samuel for her mother, and Caroline Samuels for her father as well. So from the third to the 10th centuries, Babylon was the center of Jewish development and of Torah study. It was there in the great academies of Sura and Pumpedita that the Babylonian Talmud was taught, expounded, debated, and ultimately committed to writing. Jewish learning was active and intensive. During weekdays, profound and technical lectures were delivered to scholars and to students. And on Shabbat and on all the holy days, they were delivered to the general public. But there was one special Shabbat in the year when the Reish Galuta, the Exilarch, who was the political leader of Babylon Jewry, but like a king, would deliver a lecture to the assembled people in the presence of all of the greatest scholars. And this occasion was a really big deal. It had a special name as it happens. It was called Rigle de Reish Galuta, the holiday of the Exilarch. The Shabbat that was chosen for this annual event was Shabbat Lech Lecha, the Parsha for our Shabbat. Why? There's an ancient Jewish text called Tana Deve Eliyahu, the teachings from the school of the, or the yeshiva of Rabbi Eliyahu. In it, we are told that there are 6,000 years of human history divided into three cycles of 2,000 years each. The first 2,000 years are called Tohu, chaos, because the world during that era was spiritually rudderless. The second 2,000 years is called Torah, because in it, the word of God and God himself became more accessible to mankind and a certain kind of order began to assert itself in human affairs. The Torah, by the way, was given in the first quarter of the first way, of the way through this period in the year 2448, according to the Jewish count. The last 2,000 years are called Yemot HaMashiach and uh, the days of the Mashiach, because during these years, the forces of Torah representing order and the forces of Tohu representing chaos, battle for supremacy. And the history and the achievements of mankind will be decided during this period. Mashiach comes only when Torah, order, finally triumphs over Tohu, over chaos. So the er era of Tohu begins with the creation of the world. That's, by the way, why the Bible tells us that at the beginning of creation, the world was, famously in the words of the Chumash, tohu v'vahu, chaos and void. Mashiach comes at the other side of it, when Torah triumphs towards the end of the third period. But the question is, when does the second period, the period of Torah, begin? And the answer to that is, according to our tradition, it begins with Abraham and Sarah, who undertake their travels from Haran on the cusp of the third millennium in the year 1950 BC, before the Common Era, just under 4,000 years ago. And that is the reason why Babylon Jewry shows the Shabbat of Lech Lecha, in which Abraham and Sarah's epic journey is described, to celebrate the inception of what would turn out to be so many years later, the most extraordinary flourishing of Jewish wisdom, scholarship and contribution to humanity, culminating in the compiling of the Talmud, truly the age of Torah. The beginning of the journey seems inauspicious and insignificant. After all, a man and his wife leave the town in which they're living and move to another town. But the Torah tells us one more additional piece of information. They also took with them which normally is translated as 
the servants who had, they had, had acquired in Haran. But tradition ascribes a deeper meaning to this phrase. Nefesh Asher Asub Haran refers to the souls who they had converted to follow their belief in one God. In other words, the era of Torah begins and the era of Tohu, chaos, ends only when Abraham and Sarah are not satisfied with their own obedience to their religious instincts, but they're ready to leave their restricted circles of their own families and their environment in order to touch and to win over the souls of their fellow men back into the belief of the one God who created the world. So when committed Jews are prepared to go beyond themselves and to serve wider humanity, that is the moment in which the age of Torah begins. That is the moment that was celebrated by the Jews of Babylon. So we are living in the third era, the era in which the forces of Torah and Tohu are locked in a fateful struggle for supremacy over the world at large. And I have this question. If Abraham and Sarah were suddenly to drop into our world, I wonder what they would think. The belief in one God that they proclaimed has been accepted by large swathes of humanity. The Jewish tribe that they fathered and mothered has flourished and grown and hugely influenced mankind for the good over the centuries. The fledgling nation that they founded are back in the land that were promised by God and from which for over 2000 years, their descendants were exiled. So I think on the one hand, they would be pleased and proud. But knowing their track record, I don't think that they would be satisfied. For the task that they started has not been completed. The forces of chaos abound. There is continued and renewed senseless hatred of their tribe. I think they would be dismayed to read the Equality and Human Rights Commission report on anti-Semitism in the Labour Party published this week if they could read English. And it is possible that they would be critical of us as well, the Jewish community, for being inward looking and a little bit complacent, comfortably ensconced and accepted within wider society. I think they would urge us to sharpen our radical, radical edge, not to succumb to the forces around us that pull us inexorably towards conformity and not to lose the hunger to fulfill our God-given mission. So Shlach Shabbat Shlech Lecha commemorates the beginning of the Jewish journey and it serves as an annual reminder to us that it is within our capacity to bring the journey closer to its destination. Each one of us is allotted a little part of the world to positively influence it's for us to take up the challenge. The spirit of Abraham and Sarah lives on. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>